how to write down your mathematics correctly. Coming right up. Notation is the system of written symbols that we use to write down or represent our mathematics. Now the picture there is of Alfred North Whitehead, a very famous English mathematician and philosopher. And he said, and this is a quote, by relieving the brain of unnecessary work, a good notation sets it free on more advanced problems. And what he meant by that is if you write down your mathematics correctly, it helps you to think about it and it helps you to get a deeper understanding of about, it, about what the concepts are. It's very important to get your notation correct. I got this from my friend and colleague Ginger Anderson. So let's examine the English phrase, let's eat grandma. <gasps> Cannibalism! 50 years in jail! Oh no! Actually, I forgot the comma. So now, it's just lunch. Hey, let's eat, Grandma. Let's start with a very common issue. And that is chaotic annotation. Just stuff written all over the place. And the improper use of equal signs, often no equal signs at all. So we're going to begin with an example. Find and simplify the difference quotient for the function. f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. And remember the formula is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now I'm not going to teach you how to work this problem. I'm going to talk about how to write this problem down correctly. Well, we know what we have to do in this problem is find the difference quotient. So the first thing we want to do is write down what we're seeking, f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Now I'm going to make a claim that what I'm going to write down on the other side of this equal sign is this difference quotient. And in order to organize my thoughts, I'm going to put the f of x plus h in this square brackets. So that's 2 instead of x, x plus h all squared plus 3x plus h plus 4. So everything in there is actually the f of x plus h. And now I'm going to make sure that I don't get myself confused. This is just the f of x. So it's 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. And then all of that is divided by h. Now I can't just go around ignoring all of that. I could work out f of x plus h and then separately work out f of x and then plug them into this formula. But I better write down that's clearly what I'm doing. Now I'm going to line up my equal signs. That means I am, I'm claiming that the line above is equal to the next line that I'm going to write down. So this is 2, and I order of operations says I better square this first. So it's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 4. Now all of that's still just my f of x plus h. And now I'm going to go ahead and just distribute this negative sign. So it's minus 2x squared minus 3x minus 4 all over h. Now I can't just drop the h if I feel like doing it. And now if I want to get rid of that square bracket that I put in there indicating all of that is the f of x plus h. I better distribute the 2. So I have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 4 minus 2x squared minus 3x and minus 4. And I can't just decide to drop the denominator. I've got to keep that denominator going. And what I might do next is to think about what is going to get summed up to zero. Now I want you to notice I've got a nice line of equal signs here. I'm clearly delineating f of x plus h here and just f of x here, all divided by h. So this I notice and this will sum up to zero. This and this will sum up to zero and this and this will sum up to zero. 
And now what I need to do is continue to work this problem and I'm going to claim, I'm going to put an equal sign here, and I'm going to write my simplified equation down. Now when I line up the equal signs, that's indicating that I think the line above is equal to the line below. So I have 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3h all divided by h. Now, I can simplify this one more time. And I do not cross out and say I'm cancelling things. In order to cancel, I have to have a factor of 1. So can I factor anything out of this top here, out of the numerator? Yes. I could factor out an h, and that would give me 4x plus 2h plus 3, wouldn't it? All divided by h. I'm going to put the h over here because it, it's very clear now that h divided by h is just 1. So my last and final thing I'm going to write down is 4x plus 2h plus 3. And that is my final answer without the denominator. Now let's look at this. I've lined up my equal signs. I've used equal signs. I've lined up my equal signs. On the left-hand side, I've said what the equation is that I'm working on. I've clearly delineated what's the f of x plus h, and I've subtracted the f of x. And I have to do this very carefully, and I've lined up all my equal signs. It's very clear what I'm doing and what I'm thinking. Now let's look at some things that are incorrect. Now this student has actually got the right answer here, but sh definitely should lose points for very bad and confused notation. So I think I have to guess and figure out what the person's thinking. And I see that I think this right here is probably, there's no equal sign, so I don't know. I think this is probably f of x plus h right here. And this is f of x plus h. So this is kind of separate from what I see over there on the left-hand side, but I have to figure that out. And now I see f of x plus h minus f of x comes down here. So this is confused. It's not properly annotated. They did at least put in the uh, denominator, so that's good. So this, once we've added up everything that's going to sum up to 0, will give me this equation right here. And now this student is using an arrow. Now, don't use an arrow. An arrow has a very specific mathematical meaning. And it's not appropriate here. What the student should have done is write another equal sign and write the correct answer, which is 4x plus 2h plus 3, underneath, instead of all this right here. Here's another example of pretty poor notation. It's very, very difficult for me to follow this. Um, the student has done actually quite a few things right, but it's so confused they have got the wrong answer. So it, I, I'm guessing, again, there's no equal sign, so that's the first problem. Where are the equal signs? And this here looks probably like f of x plus h right here, I'm going to guess. So all of this is f of x plus h here, but it's not clearly indicated. We'll keep going here. And this looks like the f of x. So f of x, and there's, no, there's an h here, but it's very hard to see. There's no equal sign. So if they'd written all of that and put an equal sign, that would be quite a good thing, but they did not do that. Now suddenly the denominator has disappeared here. So where's the denominator? Totally missing. And they've multiplied out the x plus h squared, so that's good, plus x and, and all of this. So this is actually correct, but there's no denominator. There's no equal signs, and it's actually got very little to do with the line above. Now we've got a denominator that's reappeared, so that's good, I guess. Denominator's back, and now we couldn't use an equal sign because we've got this thing in the middle, and it's not equal to that. Um, so they're doing quite well, but can you see how the notation problem here is really getting in the way of their thinking? They've actually got most of the hard work done here, and the student has not got this answered correctly. So they've added up you know, stuff. They've left out the minus 5 and the plus 5. So I'd say that there should be a minus 5 here and a plus 5 here. So that's a problem. They do have the h in there. That would, of course, cross out. But they can't put an equal sign because of this problem here. 
And now I've got down here and it's just completely uh, kind of messed up here. So we've got a problem here and there's no equal signs again and their bad notation has meant they, they just haven't got very many points at all, maybe just a few points because they've they've started out well but because their notation is so disorganized and that means their thinking is disorganized, they've got very few points. They have not come up with the right answer at all. Now let's look at a student who did, solved this a different, or wrote it down a dif differently than what I did at the beginning, but nevertheless is perfectly correct. What they did is write down the function first of all, so there's the f of x. And they've clearly used equal signs. I can see that they mean f of x and they've re rewritten it. Then they've told me, oh, I'm going to work out f of x plus h. And they've worked all of that out first. And now they've rewritten the difference quotient here. I've got the appropriate equal sign. And now if I'm going to claim that this equals this, then I must have the uh, denominator here. And they've gone ahead and added up everything that, or crossed out everything that added up to zero. And then they've got this amount here. Notice now they've factored out the h. So they can go ahead and cancel. And even though this student hasn't lined up all the equal signs, that would be my only complaint there. Perhaps they didn't have enough space in the exam, and it would be perfectly all right to do what they did here, because it's very clear to see, and they did line up this equal sign with this equal sign, which would indicate to me there's probably not quite enough space on the exam to do this. So this one was good. Four points. All the points. Ten out of ten points. Good job. Now, in the past, I've done a pretty good job of convincing students they need to have equal signs. And some students just take away a single uh, rule, which is put equal signs everywhere it's possible to put them, or even when it's not possible to put them. So this is a case where it's an, still an inappropriate use of equal signs. This begins with an equation. An equation begins with an equal sign. And in our previous problem, we had an expression that we had to fill in for. It did not have an equal sign in the beginning. An equal sign will come up with a possible solution. So if you want to show equivalent equations, you absolutely do not put two equal signs on a single line. What you want to do is you want to line up the equal signs of the equivalent equations. So these are equivalent equations. I've lined up the equal signs. And that shows that they are equivalent equations. And I do not use two equal signs on one line. I would like to invite you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks very much for listening.